Can you believe I found this shirt in the men's section at Marshall's? I mean, what luck is that? Except for the fact that Minette is on it, but we're gonna ignore that. We're gonna ignore that. Hey y'all, it's Animac. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a very good day. Yes, I am back with a monthly favorites video, except it is a double monthly favorites video because I'm including stuff that I liked from June and July into this one video. So it's gonna be a long one, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get on into it. I was gonna start off by doing the June videos first, but I just have to mention Chainsaw Man. I mean, like, I don't know anything about the series. I have never read the manga. I don't know anything about the series other than the anime looks fan-fucking-tastic and I cannot wait for it to come out. MAPPA has really been the anime studio of 2020 to 2021 with Attack on Titan and Jujutsu Kaisen and now Chainsaw Man and I'm super fucking excited for this to come out to know finally what the hype was about because beforehand I kind of thought that honestly I thought that Chainsaw Man was a little lame sounding and then I saw the design for Chainsaw Man in the manga and I was like man that's really lame and then I watched the trailer because everyone was hyping about it and I was like this looks like the best thing I have ever seen in my life. It's so beautiful looking. So I'm so excited for it to come out. Uh, and if manga readers in the comments want to like leave some non-spoilery, more fun things about the, the series, I would totally appreciate that and some things to look forward to. Anyway, I'm gonna move into the June stuff from last month now, so let's get into that. Oh, Pride Month. What a good month to catch up on queer anime while I was waiting for the dub to catch up on it. Basically, the story is Longest from Canada, Reki's from Okinawa, and the two come together and Reki makes the two of them bond over skateboarding. This is just, it's just a very sweet series. I think everyone needs to watch it. All the characters are very funny and seeing the various character developments and rise and fall of relationships is just so nice. I think one of my favorite plot points, uh, even though it's the saddest one, is Reki feeling like he's falling behind his friends. It's a very relatable plotline that makes sense with the story, with Longa having picked up skateboarding so quickly after having it been revealed that he was a snowboarder. Longa picked up skateboarding so quickly that he ended up on the same level as Cherry and Joe in like two months, and that's just- that's just a crazy thought. I can't even imagine. It's just very sad to watch someone who was so thoroughly into skating just totally fall out of it because of a fear that his friends were becoming better and leaving him behind. But I'm so in love with this anime and you definitely need to watch it. I'm so excited for that anime project to be released and the two stage plays? Oh my god, I'm so hyped. I'm so excited. Getting to see this in the theaters in April was seriously a joy, but getting to watch from the comfort of my house is 10 times better. I'll try not to make this segment as long because I'm pretty much going to be saying what a lot of people have already said already about this movie because it's been a couple months since it's been out and I feel like a lot of Demon Slayer fans have seen it up to this point already. The movie is a continuation of the end of season one with Tanjiro Zenitsu, Inosuke, and Rengoku, the flame Hashira, meeting on the Mugen train to solve all the mysteries of the missing disappearances and other things like that. Where do I even begin with this movie? First of all, the animation is just flawless, as always, with Demon Slayer. It's just so visibly pleasing to look at. It's such a beautiful movie. UFO Table is like truly on top of their shit and I, I give them praise. I give them praise. Thank you, UFO Table. But the soundtracks just tied the movie together so beautifully. Whether the music was badass or action-packed or orchestral and sad, it really just- the music made the movie so special and it made a lot of the scenes work so well. I mean, you just- just listen and watch.
I mean, need I explain further? Plus, I enjoyed getting to see Rengoku and what he can do beyond just, like, meeting him awkwardly in the master's house. He was a really iconic character and I don't think anyone from anything I've seen recently can, like, ever match up to him. But if you haven't seen Demon Slayer, you really need to check it out, and if you haven't seen Mugen Train, it's available, legally, on Funimation, so please go watch it. The AC went off again. This is- it's such a scary thing when that happens. Here's another edition of Mac rewatching old shows that they totally forgot about. This time I mostly rewatched Tokyo Ghoul because of Tokyo Ghoul Re, which I had never seen before, but I watched like clips of it and it looked so cool and I needed a reason to watch it. So I decided to rewatch the first two seasons and then I got into Tokyo Ghoul Re. In this video only, I will only be talking about Tokyo Ghoul Re because I'm pretty sure majority of people have seen the first two seasons of Tokyo Ghoul, so I'll only be focusing on season three, and there's a lot of spoilers, so just, I would recommend skipping to the next segment at this time stamp, if I can get it right, so yeah, yeah just skip there. Akira-san. Arima-san. This is set two years after the end of season two and we're introduced to a very new CCG that allows ghouls to work within their ranks and that's kind of fucking cool. Although it's only a half ghoul called Kinks which are kind of like Kaneki in the sense that they are surgically modified to become ghouls um, except it's, you know, done legally and 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 with consent and they know what's gonna happen to them also they're allowed to eat like human food which was never explained but there's a lot of scenes of Haize like cooking it up in the kitchen and they eat it and I'm like how what anyway and they're also ghouls who fight other ghouls so they're you know that's the whole point of the CCG we're also introduced to this Quinks squad who is led by Haize Sasaki who were shown is to be Kaneki, but is going by a different name, a different personality. I'm gonna be completely honest, this season was confusing as shit. There's just so much happening and so much going on. It made it like hard to watch at some points because my brain, things were just like flowing evenly. It was kind of like, like, like very jagged, like the flow of, of the story. It also seemed like a lot of ghoul science was being changed around a lot to make shit edgier and fit more with certain characters. Like, I can't even give like a full review of the season because I don't even really know what happened. <laughs> and you know what, maybe that doesn't even mean it's bad, It maybe it just means I didn't watch it closely and I need to rewatch it at some point. But you know what, I'm just happy that Kaneki and Toka got their happy ending. I mean, that's literally all I want. That's all I wanted for them, because they've gone through so much shit. This has got to be one of the saddest anime films and World War II films that I've ever seen. It was like one of those nights where I just couldn't sleep. And so I decided to watch something that, like, I had heard was really sad and I knew it was probably gonna be really sad and so I watched all hour and 25 minutes of it anyway and there I was, bawling at 7 a.m. Haven't slept yet. And you know what? Maybe I wish I didn't watch it at the time I watched it. Maybe I should have watched it when I was more mentally prepared. <laughs> the movie is set in late World War II Japan and follows Seita and his little sister Setsuko as they try to survive their way through the war. When their mother dies from some super serious burn injuries and their father is out in the navy fighting in the war, they are forced to stay at a super strict aunt's house and they try their best to make good out of a really extremely dire situation. I watched this movie twice in a day and sobbed both times watching it. It's an extremely beautiful and powerful movie. It is just so, it's just so sad. It's not very often that a World War II movie shows a completely different perspective of what the war was like because I feel like a lot of World War II movies are focused on like one or two different topics, um, but it's never that they go to the eastern side of what the war was like because it was, it was bad. It was just bad. 
There's also a very kind of sad innocence to this movie, with Seita doing everything in his power to prevent Setsuko from seeing everything about what the war was really doing to them and how dark it really was. And Seita does everything in his power to provide for Setsuko and giving her what she wants and a little bit of what she needs. Like, I cannot stress enough that I feel like this movie needs to be watched by everybody. <laughs> There's is a legal way to watch it, but you have to pay for it. So as much as I hate doing this, I watched it for free on YouTube. If you just search Grave of the Fireflies full movie, you'll find it. I really hate watching anime illegally, but like, or not from a legal source, but this was like the only way I was able to watch it without having to pay a couple dollars that I don't have right now to watch it. Um, but I really do recommend that you watch it if you can. Uh, just please do. It's so impactful. Like, it, it has changed the way I think about things. So, yeah, just please watch it if you can. Now, I don't have any manga for the past June and July that I've really, like, set my heart on because I haven't really had time to read a lot of manga because... Well, that's a lie. I've had time. I just haven't read manga. Hello, I've lied to all of you. So I just realized I just ended the video. Um, but I realized I never got Boys Who Run the Riot. I didn't get the one I've actually read and started reading. Um, it's about a boy, Rio, who came out as trans- Who hasn't come out as trans, but he's a closeted trans boy. This is him. And this guy he meets in his class, and they're starting a fashion brand. And it's actually a really good read. I'm- a little bit halfway through it, um, but this is actually one that I've like picked up and started reading. It's really good. I also have Life Lessons with Uramichi Onisan. It's a really good one too. Uh, very cynical and dark if you like that kind of thing. You should totally read this one too. I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, when I said I haven't read anything, I was lying. I'm so sorry. All right, I'll go. <laughs> Um, however, to make up for this, I'm going to show all the manga that I've bought over the past two months. So, let me get on to do that. This! This is all the manga I've bought in the past month or two. Well, two months, I should say. This is so much manga! I have a problem, and I haven't read any of it! Oh my god, I have a problem. Okay, anyway. I'm not gonna do like a detailed summary of all of them. I'm just gonna show you the things that I've bought. Not in any particular order of month because I don't wanna do that. Sarazamai, the book, it's like a real novel. It's not like a, a manga book. It's like a like a real book. My Hero Academia, volume five. Watakoi, volume two. Little Miss P. Um, this I heard Aki Dearest really liked this book, so I picked it up, and it's like really cute from what I've kind of read of it. I Am Hero. It's a zombie apocalypse book. Given, volume two. I've been searching everywhere for this goddamn volume, and I can't find it anywhere. And I found it at Barnes & Noble, thank god. Dick Fight Island. It's exactly what it sounds like. You know, last one to come becomes king. <laughs> The first three volumes of Demon Slayer. I think I got these two earlier on, but we're gonna act like I haven't. Volumes three through five of Banana Fish. I found this at Barnes & Noble. What a lucky find. And then I got these two for free from Books A Million because they didn't make me pay for it before they sent it. Um, but don't tell them that. Uh, and then Attack on Titan volume eight. It's, you know, they're fighting in the city. It is what it is. But yeah, that's, um, this is everything I've bought in the last two months. Oh, help me. I have a problem. That's the end of my June and July favorites video. If you liked the video, be sure to like it and comment and do all the fun things. When you're seeing this, I'll be at Raleigh Supercon, because that's a fun time. If you happen to see me, say hi or whatever. Okay, I'll be in cosplay, so it'll be a little hard to tell who I am unless you've like really memorized my face weirdo but <laughs> other than that um that'll be a fun time so I don't know I don't have like a fan base but if you like are there you should say hi like that'd be cool anyway that's all I have for this video um I will see you guys in the next one bye <laughs> I gotta put this shit back in order on the shelf what kind of hell I took the time to do this! I don't want to-
want to do, I don't want to, I gotta, damn it. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>